Hi students, in this video I'd like to discuss about syntax analysis. We already studied syntax analyzer is also known as parser. So the role of the parser. In our compiler model, the parser or syntax analyzer obtains a string of tokens from the lexical analyzer as shown in the figure and verifies that the string of token names can be generated by the grammar for the source language. So the input to the syntax analyzer or parser is tokens. The tokens are the outputs of lexical analyzer. Those things we already discussed. And the output of parser is a parse tree. And that parse tree will be given to the rest of front end. Rest of front end means semantic analyzer and intermediate code generator. We expect the parser to report any syntax errors in an intelligible fashion and to recover from commonly occurring errors to continue processing the remainder of the program. Conceptually, for well-formed programs, the parser constructs a parse tree and passes it to the rest of the compiler for further processing. So the input to the parser are tokens. So the parser will take token by token, which is the output of lexical analyzer, and it will generate parse tree. And it also access symbol table for the details about various symbols. So simply saying the role of parser is to generate parse tree. Next one is parser. There are three general types of parsers for grammars. Universal parser, top down parser and bottom up parser. The methods commonly used in compiler can be classified as being either top down or bottom up. Top down methods build parse tree from top that is root to the bottom that is leaves. Bottom up method start from the leaves and work their way up to the root. So parser just construct a parse tree. So from the tokens parser is going to construct parse tree. Two methods are there top down and bottom up. So top down approach means the tree will be developed from root to the leaves. Bottom up approach means the trees will be developed from leaves to the root or to the top. In either case, the input to the parser is scanned from left to right on symbol at a time. The input to the parser is a stream of tokens. So it will always read from left to right. Parser or syntax analyzer is the heart of the compiler. So the core part of any compiler is parser. So the topic parser or syntax analyzer is very important. Next we are going to see about context-free grammars. I think we already heard about this context-free grammars in formal language and automata theory. In the previous video, we discussed about definition of grammar, which contain non-terminal, terminals, productions and start symbol. We all know what is a terminal, what is non-terminal and we all know what is production also. But in context-free grammars, the production will be in the form non-terminal produce any combination of terminals and non-terminals. So the production or the set of productions in Context-free grammar always follows this pattern. That means LHS is always a single non-terminal. Only one non-terminal will be there in the left-hand side part of the production. And RHS can be any combination of terminals and non-terminals. That means RHS can be anything. So LHS is always a single non-terminal and RHS can be anything. Such grammars are called context-free grammar. So if the productions follows these conditions for a given grammar, we can call that grammar as a context-free grammar. So here's an example. It's a grammar for branching statements. Here, T, terminals means if, then, else. Reload means relation operator, ID, and number. N, non-terminals are statement, expression, and term. So left-hand left -hand side contain only one non-terminal. For every production, left hand side contain only one non-terminal. Right hand side contain combination of non-terminals and terminals. Here, start symbol is STMT. So if we notice this grammar, we can generate any any combination for if else statement. Expression always contains some relation operator on left and right contains some terms. Times may be either identifier or a number. Number means a constant. Similarly, statement can be anything. It can be another if else or another if or it can be nothing. Nothing can be represented by epsilon. So this is just an example for context-free grammars. 
During compilation, the parser uses the CFG to make a parse tree. So the parser will get tokens as the input and based on this grammar, it is producing parse tree. Earlier in lexicon analysis, there also we have a grammar there. It is actually regular grammar. There, a meaningful sequence or lexemes are converted to tokens. So there, regular grammar is used here. Context-free grammars are used to construct parse tree. So another example for context-free grammar. So this grammar defines a simple arithmetic expression. The terminal symbols are id, plus, minus, star, slash, opening bracket, closing bracket. It is worth noticing that id together form a terminal. You never consider i as a terminal and d as a terminal. id together forms a terminal. That's why id is given in bold. The non the non terminal symbols are expression, term and factor and expression is the start symbol. So if you notice this production or notice this grammar, with the help of this grammar we can generate any expression which contain plus operator, minus operator and star operator and division operator along with the bracket. So same grammar is represented in another form. Here instead of expression I am using E. Instead of term I am using T. Plus is used as plus, minus is used as minus and instead of factor I am using F, instead of expression I am using E. So here expression can be of three types, expression plus time, expression minus term or term itself. So here it is represented as E gives E plus T or E minus T or T. When we write a context free grammar, terminals are represented as small letters and non-terminals are represented as capital letters. So here non-terminals are this E, T and F. Non-terminals are also known as variables. Next is derivations. The construction of a parse tree can be made precise by taking a der derivational view in which productions are treated as rewriting rules. Beginning with the start symbol, each rewriting step reduces a non-terminal by the RHS of one of its productions. There are two types of derivations. Rightmost derivation, which replace rightmost non-terminal by a production. Similarly, in leftmost derivation, replace leftmost non-terminal by a production. So this derivation also has studied in formal language and automated theory. Anyway, I will try to explain with the help of an example. So here I have a grammar. E gives E plus E or E star E or within bracket E or ID. So I have to derive ID plus ID star ID. So here I can, I am discussing about leftmost derivation and rightmost derivation. Always I will start from a starting symbol. Anyway, here starting symbol is E. That is the only non-terminal. So I want to generate ID plus ID star ID. So first I will write E equal to E plus E. Since it is leftmost derivation, I will replace leftmost non-terminal by a production. So this E will be replaced by a production. Which production I used? I used E gives ID. So this instead of this E, I have written ID. So now ID plus E is the new derivation. Here again I am, re I am applying leftmost derivation. That means I am replacing leftmost non-terminal. Here in this production, leftmost non-terminal is E. That E, I am replacing it by E star E. Because here I have a production, E gives E star E. Again I am applying leftmost derivation. So this E is the leftmost non-terminal. That non-terminal is replaced by ID. So I got ID plus ID star E. Now the leftmost non-terminal is this E. And this E is replaced by ID. So I got ID plus ID star ID. So here I have given another set of derivation which also follows leftmost derivation which derives the same statement ID plus ID star ID. So similarly I have an example of rightmost derivation. So here also it is starting with E plus E. So here I am replacing rightmost non-terminal first. So I am replacing that E by E star E. Then I am replacing this E by ID because that is a rightmost non-terminal. It is replaced by ID. Then this E is replaced by ID. Then this E is replaced by ID. So there also I got the 
same expression id plus id star id similarly this one also giving the same expression so parse tree so parse tree is another way of representing derivations here in this parse tree first i have used e plus e then i replaced this e with id then i replaced this e with e star e and both these e's are replaced with id if you look at the leaves from left to right you will get the expression you have to look look at the leaves from left to right id left most terminal is id next terminal is plus next one is id next one is star again next one is id so if you notice this parse tree carefully this actually represent left most derivation actually this parse tree follows left most derivation to derive this string or derive the expression id plus id star id next time is ambiguous grammar a grammar that produces more than one parse tree for some sentence is said to be ambiguous ambiguous grammar is one that produces more than one leftmost derivation or more than one rightmost derivation for the same sentence so the examples we have the example we have discussed here is a typical example of ambiguous grammar because here it has more than one parse tree these two trees are different but the string which it derive is id plus id star id here this left here we have more than one leftmost derivation so it is an ambiguous grammar here we have more than one rightmost derivation so in that way also we can call it as a ambiguous grammar ambiguous grammar is one that produces more than one leftmost derivation or more than one rightmost derivation for the same sentence same sentence means in the sentence we derived is id plus id star id so here the string is bit different id plus id plus id so here i have two parse trees in both the cases i have used leftmost derivation but here this one is not correct this one is correct so i will try to explain it so you just imagine this as an expression tree expression tree means we have some variables or we have some nodes and also we have some operators if you notice this tree which will be the first thing we are going to evaluate here we are, anyway we are going to add id plus id plus id we have three identifiers that's the meaning so here based on this tree first thing first operator will be this plus we will add this id and this id then we will get a result and that result will be added along with this id at the same time if you notice this here first thing we will add is this second id and third id second id and third id then that result will be added along with the first id this is wrong because it follows it doesn't follows associativity because we all know plus follows left associativity that means if we have a plus b plus c left associativity means first it will calculate a plus b then we will calculate that result of a plus b and c so left most plus will be evaluated first then the next left plus will be evaluated that's why this grammar or this parse this parse tree is false because it fo it follows wrong associativity because plus always follows left associativity we already discussed we can generate a number of parse trees but here we recognize all parse trees are not correct so in the previous slide we discussed about associativity here we are discussing about precedence so i, I mark this parse tree as correct and this one as wrong so i already told you consider this an expression tree so if we consider this as an expression tree the first thing we will evaluate is this id plus id then that result will be multiplied so in, a, in an expression tree always the lower level operations are performed first here low, lower level operation means id plus id will be performed first just take an example we have 2 plus 3 star 4 
So in first ID, I am giving a value 2. Second ID, I am giving a value 3. And the third ID, I am giving a value 4. So actual result is 14. Because first we have to perform the multiplication. So here, multiplication is performed. That means the lower level operation is performed. Then that result will be added with 2. So here what happened? First, 2 plus 3 is estimated that is 5, 5 star 4 is 20. That is a wrong answer. Again, we understood all parse trees are not correct. So here we have discussed about associativity and precedence. So how to achieve associativity and precedence? Left associative can be achieved by defining a grammar as left recursive. A production of grammar is said to be left recursive if the leftmost variable Leftmost variable means leftmost non-terminal. Non-terminals are also known as variables. Leftmost variable of its RHS is same as variable of its LHS. So here LHS is E. What is the first variable or first non-terminal in the right hand side? E is the first non-terminal or variable in the right hand side. That is same as LHS. Now we just read this definition. A production of grammar is said to have left recursive if leftmost variable of its RHS is same as variable of its LHS. Similarly, right associativity can be achieved by defining a grammar as right recursive. So a production of grammar is said to have right recursive if the rightmost variable of its RHS is same as variable of its LHS. So here I have an example. So we all know plus minus multiplication, division, everything are left associative. That means if we have more than one operators of plus minus star and division, leftmost operator will be handled first. But in case of power, actually we are handling the rightmost operator. Suppose we have something like 4 power, 3 power, 2. First we will calculate 3 power, 2. 3 power, 2 means 9. Then we will calculate 4 power, 9. So associative can be achieved by defining the grammar as left recursive or right recursive based on the required associativity. Precedence can be achieved by defining productions in multiple levels. Precedence increases from top to bottom levels. <coughs> so consider this example here the operator is plus the production is left recursive this production E gives E plus T is left recursive we have another production also E gives T it is neither left recursive or right recursive so we have another production T gives T star F the operator here is star and here also we are defined production as left recursive but one thing you have no, you have to notice it that is in the second level because precedence increases from top to bottom star has more precedence than plus if we have another if we used operator minus also we have to define minus in the same level there we will define something like e plus t or e minus t or t so similarly for division also we will define it in the same level as star. So here the starting symbol is E. So if we draw a parse tree or if we imagine a, imagine drawing a parse tree, we will first take the production E equal to E plus T. So it will be in the top level. So in the expression tree, always bottom level will be evaluated first. In the next example, power operator is all, also considered. That is in the third level because it is higher precedence than plus and star. So it is given a lower level than plus and star. Since it is right associative, I have used a right recursive grammar. So one thing you are noticing is, is all grammar are context free grammars. So here is an example. Here this parse tree stores the shows the derivation of id plus id star id. So if you look at this one, the first thing we are going to evaluate is this id star id. 
then we will evaluate id plus that particular value of the expression so if you look at this parse tree the first thing we can draw is e equal to e plus t e plus t for a sentence id plus id star id with this given grammar we can't include star in the first level so by slight modifications we can achieve associativity and precedence so this this parse tree shows the example for precedence so this example is for associativity so this parse tree is generated from this grammar first is e equal to e plus t i can't replace this t with an expression containing plus i can only replace this e so i used e plus t i can't directly derive id from e so from e i derived t from t i derived f from that f i derived id if we notice this example first calculation will be id plus id that means first plus considered is in this sentence is left to most plus because e plus t that is this e plus t is in or this id plus id is in the lower level i already told you lower level lower level in the expression d tree have the highest priority or highest precedence so by defining e plus t in the lower level i achieved left associativity so this is all i want to share in this video thank you